Right, so we have leaked benchmarks for the M2 MacBook Air, and of course, many of you guys might be wondering, is there a difference with the performance of this Mac compared to the MacBook Pro with a fan? Well, let's delve into it, but first, make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. And with that being said, let's just talk in. So here are the results for the Geekbench 5 CPU test. We have a single core score of 1,899 and a multi-core score of 8,965. Now that is basically on par with the M2 MacBook Pro because that scored 1,919 for the single core and 8,928 for the multi-core, so there's not a massive difference. And that is great news because there has been talk about overheating issues with the M2 MacBook Pro, so many of us have been worried that the performance on the Air was going to be throttled, but that's not the case. Though, to be fair, this is a synthetic benchmark. Obviously, more testing has to be done to see if there is any massive throttling with the Air, but personally, I don't think that's going to be the case because the M1 Air was very close to the M1 Pro in terms of real-life usage, and the throttling was really not that much. In fact, I use a MacBook Air for editing, and this has never given me any issues, and so I doubt there's going to be any massive throttling with the M2 version. And yeah, to be honest, most MacBook Air users are using this for basic stuff, and so yes, performance should not be an issue with this Mac. And in case you're wondering how this compares to the M1 Air, this does match with what Apple told us, so an 18% improvement, which isn't a lot. And to be honest, if you do have the M1 Air, I think you should just wait for the M3 or the M4 version, because this M2 Air, while giving us a new design, is also way more expensive and has pretty similar performance, so I don't think it's worth the upgrade. And yeah, to be honest, because of the higher price, I still think the M1 Air is the best bang for your buck laptop due to the plethora of deals from third parties. So yes, I do think most users should just get that. But don't get me wrong guys, if you're willing to pay the extra for the M2 MacBook Air, that will be a nice upgrade, especially with the new design. Now the only other question I'm wondering about is of course the SSD speed of the base model, since the M2 MacBook Pro saw a massive downgrade in that aspect, and so many are curious whether the Air is also going to be affected. And to be honest, I do think there's a very high chance Yes, this MacBook Air is also going to get one 256 gig NAND chip instead of two 128 chips. And yeah, that does suck, but of course, Apple does need to get these products out. And with the chip shortage, I'm sure it's harder to produce some components. And so, if the one 256 gig NAND chip does help Apple produce these MacBooks at a much faster rate, I'm kind of fine with that compromise because ultimately most consumers really won't notice a difference. And if you are bothered by this, then of course, upgrade to storage and get 512. Yes, I know that Apple's upselling you, but having more storage with your Mac is never a bad thing. So if you do worry about the SSD speeds, just get 512. But yes, again, considering how these models have already been massively backordered, Apple's clearly struggling to produce these. And so if the slight component compromise does help Apple produce these MacBooks faster, then yes, this is the right move. Anyways, let's now delve into your thoughts regarding future Macs. So Strive HD says, So honestly, would you recommend waiting for the M2 Pro slash M2 Max? Or should I purchase the M1 Pro slash M1 Max right now, but wait for roughly a month for it to arrive? Really can't wait, and I'm due for an upgrade. So personally, I think you're better off just buying the M1 variants, purely because leaks can be false, and especially with the chip shortage, the release of the higher-end M2 MacBooks could be pushed back. And so especially since you're due for an upgrade, I do think you're better off getting the current 16-inch and 14-inch MacBooks. And also do remember that apart from the chip, there won't be much different with these Macs, and the M1 Max and the M1 Pro chip are still very good. And so yeah, I think you're not losing out on much by not getting the M2 version. So Joe says, the custom 14-inch MacBook Pro configurations need the better battery life, so this is great. And this is referring to the M2 Max and the M2 Pro chip being based on a 3 nanometer process, 
And I completely agree with Joe that yes, the 14 inch definitely does need better battery life. I completely understand that it's a pro MacBook and so performance matters more than efficiency. But then again, it's a laptop that many carry around. And so the battery life being a lot less than the base M2 MacBooks is not really that great. So yes, hopefully we do see a sizable upgrade with the battery life on these M2 Macs. So Sachin says, which one is best, a 13 inch MacBook Pro M2 or a 14 inch MacBook Pro M1? He says he wants 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage and he's an interior designer so he's gonna use SketchUp, V-Ray, Blender, Photoshop and other programs. And yeah, personally, I think the 14 inch base pro is a better buy because number one performance is slightly better with the M1 Pro since you're getting more performance cores. But more importantly, that MacBook is just a way better product. It's got more ports that I'm sure a pro like you would appreciate. And also you have a mini LED panel that looks amazing. So yes, I would just buy that. And also do remember the MacBook Pro M2 with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage is a BTO model, which of course means it's only available through Apple and so you have to pay full price. Whereas the base 14 inch is a pre-configured model and so of course that's available through third parties for a lower price. In fact, here in the UK, the 14 inch with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage is cheaper than the M2 Max and it's a way better Max, so yes, for most consumers looking to upgrade the M2 Max, you're just better off getting the 14 inch base MacBook Pro instead. Anyways, that's about it for the comments, but of course, if you have any other thoughts, let me know below. Anyways, that's about it guys. I did get the base MacBook Air by the way, so I will be testing that next week once it arrives. But tell me in the comments below guys, what do you want me to test and talk about? Anyways, thank you for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video above on details regarding the iPad 10. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya peeps.